time for the nigga to get comfy I'm from the six where bitches keep six and you get dumpy Lovely, I hear him coming to the case He's just trying to smoke, I'm trying to light up his Welcome back, welcome back to the world's most Toronto podcast. Today we got a special guest, the boy Jason, also what known as CD. How you doing, my brother? What it do? I appreciate you for coming, bro. Yes, sir. Right before I forget, today's episode is sponsored by Exotic 416. You guys see the drinks on the table? He gave us a bunch of exotic drinks. It's open at Western Road. Let me get the address for everyone. 7 John Street. In the West End. Everyone go check out that store. Nice. You get all different types of things. You feel me? But yeah, Jason, we're going to go into your early life coming up in the East End of Toronto. Yes, sir. You, Scarborough, the shooting stars, baby. Were you born yeah, and raised? The, the born, shooting stars. Shooting stars. <laughs> shooting stars. <laughs> were you born and raised in Scarborough? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Most definitely. Well, which neighborhood? Uh, I was born and raised in Galloway, the whole Galloway? as far as I can remember. Galloway. You know what I mean? How, how was it coming up in Galloway back then? It's good. It's like, it's all like, what I see in the 90s is different from kids that are growing up now. I don't know how it is now, but in the 90s, a lot of outside. You know what I mean? There was no internet. There's none of that shit. So we're outside regularly. So I grew up like, just me, my mom, my brother, no real father figure like type thing. The father figure was like the man them yeah, industry. Yeah, 100% That's, outside going outside. Yeah, outside, yeah. So like, we just used to hang around my bike, you know, go to the store for the man them, whatever's going on, like, I would get change, you know, I'd get like a $2 bill, you get money from going to the store and helping out the man them and shit, so that's how I was like, always around, so I was always like, from like, Danzig to Southside Galloway, Northside Galloway, my bike just roaming around, fucking with the old heads, and plus my brother's a bit older, so some of his friends, you know what I mean? Just, you know, figuring it all out, right? The Eastern, the Eastern, for me, back in the day, the Eastern was far to me. Like, Toronto, like, I grew up in the Western, so the yeah, Eastern yeah, was like yeah. a, Eastern or Toronto was like a journey. It was like the end of the world. Just It's only been the past couple of years I started going to Scarborough regularly. Scarborough's pretty big. I didn't know that. It's huge. Huge. There's a lot it's of huge. different neighborhoods over there. Yeah, it's, it's huge. I said the difference, like, we didn't really go to the West either, but the West is, like, kind of, like, compact. Like, you got the drain strips just full, in, you know what I'm saying? Everything just jammed up, and then it's kind of it Scarborough's more spread, but there's still metro housing. I don't know if you guys remember like the metro housing days, the rec center days, like MTHA. I don't know if you guys are old enough to about that. Back in those days, now we used to have like your block has their your your, your hood has their own MTHA. So like, what is it? What is it called? Metro Toronto Housing Association. So what is it like? Ba basketball tournaments and stuff. It's every. It's a community. It's like a summer camp. Okay, for all the all the hoods niggas go there. So like, Finch has one. Galloway's got one. Everybody's got one, right? So they used to have like track tournaments and certain shit where we all come in and do shit. You know what I'm saying? All the hoods had it different now. The kids don't grow up like that no more. This is some real hood shit. So you got to see like, you know what I mean? All the hoods would come together? On if you're part of the MTA chain until you grew out of that shit. It's like a summer camp, you know what I mean? But yeah, that was back in the day sponsored by the only hood. They, that was different because like they don't do that shit no more. You used to have like dances and shit no, like they that. Don't, they don't, they do, don't that do that no more, that no more at all. Kids don't really know that kind of culture you get me it's not different not at all and it would i feel like it would be dangerous right now bro bring no it, it would go on with that type, different type. bring it bring it a, <laughs> yeah bring it a bunch of different hoods together right now would be a problem like even us as younger we used to go to we used to have basketball we used to have, not mean this actually yeah i used to go to basketball we where yeah. all the hoods used to come together like little little leagues like in yeah. the west end and then as i got older i would coach younger guys we used to have nba tournament you know yeah. we used to have the young boys together but fuck, all those young boys right now they grew up and they're on some, they're on some yeah, shit right now you man. can't control uh people's choices man and it's, it's crazy to me you know why because like i don't see how I, I don't know how like all these kids they came up together and now they're older like majority of them are beefing with each other and it's like what you guys knew each other as young and you guys were close you know it's crazy can we check it out a lot of the beef i can't speak for all because i don't know but some of it could have been avoided 100%. You know what I mean? And I come from that shit, so it's like, when it's up, it's up. You know, I'm not, I'm not the type of guy to try and get in the middle of it if, like, shit spilled already, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's when blood, blood jarring shit, it's fucked up, you know what I mean? But let's hope they don't get to that level, if we could stop it, you know what I mean? Part of when I was incarcerated, I was inside, I wouldn't let that go on in front of me. Like, I'm not going to watch two men of my fuck with, regardless if from this side of the strip or that side of the strip. I fuck with you, I fuck with you, 
if you're on my block, it can't go in. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, can't yeah, yeah, in front yeah. of me. Not the man. Then. We have all other, we have so many other obstacles. We have the guards. We got white boys. Like, everybody, not, not everybody likes us. You know? Not only your biggest obstacle, yeah. time. You're fishing, oh, you, know? you know what I'm saying? Like, so y'all just figure it out because you're going to go to the hole. You're going to fuck up your own time on this stupid beef shit. For now, if you want to go on road and do what you want to do, I'm not saying do it, I'm not saying don't do it. Protect yourself, kid. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, but like, yeah. in here, we're not gonna do it like that. You know what I mean? percent And it's different in jail too. You gotta use your hands. Like, yeah, I, I can different. imagine a lot of a lot of niggas stop, like it's different back down from that. Different until the niggas got like six and eight homies, right? So <laughs> mm-hmm. how was the how was the vibe back then? Like, how was like in terms of like you see how there's a lot of violence in the city right now. Like we can't we can't go places as we would want to events and all that. Like you see how much innocent people are getting shot in different places. Like was it like that back then where you have to worry when you're going out? Like how was the gun violence in the city? Yes, and depending on what you're on, right? So some dudes were stepping. So yeah, the steppers were involved, and there's always been violence in the city, right? Even back in my, there's always been shit going down. Right, and there's always been unfortunately innocent people getting hit too, and all that kind of shit. Right, but um, the difference now is like back then when I was coming up, we sort of still listened to the older guys. Mm-hmm. Right, we sort of still gave them that creed, that respect. Like, yo, they say something. We still now it's kind of like young boys got their tape, they're doing their thing, they sit. You know what I mean? You could talk to them, but like, it's a bit more. Now they won't even listen to their yeah, old heads. Yeah, a bit like, more like the, the 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 gap, right? And I'm 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 a bit too older now to catch the the. That's a few gaps behind me now. You know what I'm saying? So like, I I did I was. Like you can't so, keep up with them. Yeah, they're like a bit too young for me yeah. to catch up. I'm not trying. I got my own life to live, my nigga. I can't spend my whole life trying to fix the fucking. You know what I mean? So it's like, y'all do it. You know what I mean? I wish it would. But before, if I could catch something on before, like something brewing, no blood spill. If we could fix that. Mm-hmm. Then yeah, I'm all, I'm all about Even that. Even back then, like it's crazy because the, like the old heads are all legends, and you see your young boys beef with, like to say, a homie you know or a family member you know, their little brothers are going at it, you know, and they're not, they're not listening, but they don't know. Like your old heads have history with each yeah. other; they have a like, relationship. It was like that too when we was growing yeah. up too. Like mm-hmm. even some of the old heads, like everybody got along with some of the other side too because they all grew up together. They went to school together and shit too. We're just the generation that kind of fucked it up. Not we're a couple generations kind of got involved in shit that fucked up certain relations. Like back growing up, we used to write, we used to go party like in the op block, the other side. It wasn't really an op block at that time. We used to ride bikes. There wasn't nothing like that. And shit kicked off while we were kids that we kind of grew into. You get me? But like it wasn't always, you know what I mean? Sometimes, you know, it wasn't always like that. When I was younger, I used to be able, like, I remember I would go to jams, like, in different yeah, neighborhoods different and not worry about getting shot right, or anything. You know the worst saying? thing that might happen would maybe be a bang out. But, like, we used to party anywhere, any neighborhood, you feel me? Now it's like, what? That's do suicide. Kids still, do kids still go out and have, like, if you're, like, 17 right now, and what do you do? If you, you still have, like, a basement party? Do people still have parties and as, shit? As or, a, as seven, they, yeah, what they do you say, do? Yeah, they, they trap the people. Do you see kids, they, the kids go out? Like, back in the day, we used to have high school rollout. Yeah. High school roller was like a jam where all the high schools, Tooney jams. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Our high school roller was big. All the all the neighbors used to go to one party. It was a high school. They used to have high yeah. school roller one, high school roller two, high school roller three. One time my mom pulled up on me in one of those jams. <laughs> she came and dragged me out of yeah, there, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In the middle of me having a good time, bro. So, yeah, that's what I'm saying. So I'm, I'm trying to figure out, like, what do the kids do now for a good time? Bro, how they would, pick up guns and they think internet, it's the life. Yeah, internet, yeah, it's yeah or internet, like, internet. They don't even know how to holler at girls. They don't holler at girls in, like, public and shit. I was, shit. I, was, I was just telling my wifey last night, like, uh, younger guys, they don't holler at girls no more. Like, it's mm-hmm. weird. Like, back mm-hmm. in the day, like, that was your main objective. You go on MSN to talk to a girl. Yeah, well, yeah. Or your whole, go out to find a girl. Now it's yeah. like, well, let me go outside to find some drugs. You feel me? They ain't even trying to chase paper. Dude, bro, I don't know cool. what happened to ambition. You feel me? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Nobody has ambition no more to go out and get it. Like you might have the rare few, but majority, it's like it's like you don't you see that. It, the problem when I I came home after what, after my time I did for nothing actually. But anyway, I came home. Yeah, we're gonna get into we'll get that. To that. Yeah, and I seen like the internet and the way that like the instant gratification as far as people believe in they can make it off of nothing. Sort of like you have the Kardashians, all the girls oh like feel like okay, I could. You know, do whatever. Some girls are stripping, feeling like I can make it like this. I can marry a ball player. Like this is the actual career path. So everybody believes in like faking, or not faking, but not really working. 
oh, I'm going to do this, I'm going to get big on the internet, and then I'm going to get money. You know what I mean? Nobody really wants to work anymore. So you see, like, some of the fields, like, actual job fields, like construction, electrician, all that kind of shit, are losing people. People ain't even doing that shit anymore. They all, everybody, everybody thinks they're going to finesse their way through a thing, or they want to trap. Everybody's yeah. a trapper. Yeah, everybody that wasn't a trapper. In my day, trapper, you, you had to be a guy, sort of. Now, oh, my God. Anybody could trap. Girl could trap. This guy could trap. Well, before, a young boy, send them out to the yeah, trap. Yeah, before it wasn't like that. So now, like, everybody thinking of this, like I said, instant gratification. Everybody mm-hmm. thinks they're just going to... Nobody wants. They to don't know it's work. a work. Even yeah. the they think they can put themselves on YouTube and they're gonna yeah. go right away. But they don't work that way. Even us with the podcast, like it don't happen overnight. Well, a lot of people, exactly. are like, you're not getting money. You're not getting. Money. Bro, it doesn't work that way. People, people, you're lawyers and mm. businessmen. They go to university four years and change. You put it in their field what they're doing. So if you're not doing your podcast four years and change, and you didn't put in no time, you're like, well, what you doing? You know what I mean? Like, you didn't put. In, you didn't even do nothing yet. Everybody else that earned that you see have money, they actually worked. All the artists you see, those guys, but they actually worked. There's times where they're working. People just want this instant. It's and in the way like Instagram, the way it's presented to you, you seem like it seems like it's yeah, like that. It looks like that. It looks it like it's like that. perfect. It's easy. like that. Yeah, it's like it's like it's not like you go that. viral off one thing. But yeah. I'm I'm learning firsthand right now. Like I I always used to see people entrepreneurs talk about how like they would put it into their business. They're not they put their money in. Like the the best work is work for free. Like mm-hmm. investing into mm-hmm. your craft yourself. I'm seeing that firsthand right now. Like it's a lot of work. It doesn't happen overnight. It's dedication. There's going to be nights where you're just like, yo, I don't want to do this no more. But then it's like, yeah, you started. Why quit? You feel me? You're investing into yourself. You're betting on yourself, basically. You feel me? And if you believe in yourself, then you're going to get something out of it. It might not work out, but you'll definitely get something. You'll get the experience to go into something else in the future. So Exactly. You're learning the skills while you're doing it. You know what I'm it's the best way to learn. But we don't see that anymore, man. Kids, I don't know. I don't know. I don't want. I don't want. I don't want to sound like I'm bashing any the youngins. You feel mm-hmm. me? But like, I see. No, trying... no. There's a few. I see with the music, with the lane of out here with the music that that, that do get it. Yeah. Not all of them do, but a few of them do. Right. But I they... took my hat. I took my hat off to the people, like because yeah. I know me doing this. Sh- I see how hard it is. You know. So anybody I see going overtime, like putting their craft into their yeah, music, going yeah. hard over the year, like developing, progressing, like I tip my hat off to those people. Yeah, what it is, like, remember, it's the same Insta gratification thing. So they have this facade yeah. where you're just made it already. So they want to come out in the game with 17 chains on and really, you know what I'm saying? Like you made it, no one's willing to work for the, you know what I'm saying? It actually go to the studio and build your craft and build it up. Very, very, so you have to go through that. It's hard, they, they, they want the money now. So instead of working on their craft, they're going to go trap. Trap. They're spending more time trapping, more time getting this the look of yeah, it yeah, than yeah. the actual skill of it. Yeah, facts. So now, like you look like a rapper, yeah, but you're just a rapper. You're not a recording artist. Exactly. You're studio, you're, oh, take it. Oh, let me get that back. Oh, <laughs> nigga, come on now. Yeah. You be here. Come on now, nigga. You recording artist or you a rapper? You know what I'm saying? There's a difference, right? You look like you're just a rapper. You know what I'm saying? We get you to the studio, bring you certain deals, certain meetings, certain shows. You can't swing it because you spend most of your time trapping. Looking the part, but not being the part. Yeah, you know what and I mean? these guys, so, these guys don't know. These rappers are actually putting in work, man. Like, yeah, I like I do, I've been around. I got lucky to be around a lot of major recording artists, and I've seen them record. It's not what you think. Don't let it. T- they think you hear these songs where it's like, oh, the lean. Or the, it's not a party in the studio. It's not what you think. Dudes in the yeah, dude, it's not what you think. It's not not what I thought because I even I thought it was like because it sounds like a party. It sounds like it was. It's not like that, nigga. They're working for real. They didn't come to the studio with seventeen million homeboys. You know what I'm saying? They came there with a couple mad. They came in for work, in and out. They're doing their thing. Their so first song is not going to be no. A hit, yeah, it's, not, it's not what you think. Everybody thinks it's just like it's not like that. You know, you got to go. We got to work. Take some credit from your boy. Got to tell you the truth. Like yo, I don't like that part. You can't just be like yeah, yeah. It's tough. It's tough, nigga. It ain't tough. I don't like. It. Oh, I, I don't think it's that good. You know what I mean? You got to be real with your friends. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. What? What? How was? Like work back then, like the people get jobs. Like how was the economy back back then? Like the, like the early two thousands, yeah. The economy in Honestly, terms of jobs. I'm gonna keep it real with you. It might have been good. It might have been bad. But I was on my shit. Yeah, what were you on? How were you? Like how did you? That was like, get your bread and butter. What were you up to? To I make ends involved. meet. I was the street. I was you know, I was a guy. I was a street guy. Hundred percent. There was no like. I'm not gonna pretend yeah, like, like, like most, angel. most of it's yeah, hard out here, man. Yeah, I was definitely on my shit. Serving. I wasn't really open to the opportunities of maybe the job or the economy. I couldn't give a shit about that. I was a pay no taxes. I ain't working. You know what I'm saying? You had role models to like. My role models were, come on, my role models are worse than I was. They were, you feel <laughs> yeah, what I'm saying? At yeah. that point, the old heads that we used to listen to, they're all in jail or deported. Or so. so we were the guys now, the team that we grew up with, we're, 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 we're in charge of certain things now. You understand? And yeah, like, there was no. 
how I was like, I was young. I was uh, like, we start. I started. Mm, I got I got arrested when I was nineteen, but like, I would say by like by about four, 13, 14, it was pretty much. I was a bigger kid, right? I'm over six five. So back then, growing up, I fit in. So when I'm like, when I'm twelve, my friends are sixteen. That's my crew. Yeah, I didn't grow up with the guys my age at, at all. You know what I'm saying? So it would look weird. I don't don't fit, right? So I grew up with the guys a bit older than me. So when I was like fourteen. Those guys are last year of high school and finishing. So I went to high school. These guys are great. My, my friends are great 12 and then, and some are dropping. And then, so I'm saying, so like, those are the guys I roll with. So when they were, yeah, so when they're on their stuff, I followed them into their stuff, and which wasn't always the best idea. But at the time, it's all I knew, right? It's just, like I said, instant gratification, same shit. I come on, I used to play ball nights. I come on, I can't buy ball shoes and shit like that. My mom can't get me those shoes for two something. You know what I mean? She's like, what, you crazy? You know what I mean? But the trappers got them shoes. By the tons, you know what I mean? And they there, got two, three. And there was nobody going to the leap acting from Canada. No, no, it was so hard to get, you know what I mean? That like exposure, like nobody cared. I felt like I was pretty good, but nah, I couldn't like, it, I didn't see it. I didn't really, it wasn't a real thing. I could see the trap. I yeah, could you couldn't go money. outside and see a nigga that no, made it I, to I the know, no, Now we have a bunch of pro Toronto people. That, yeah, no, Canadians. There's no way you go there and see the paper. No, come on, you go outside, you see, dude got the, got, got the whip, the act or whatever. Trapper, you got enough of trap. You know what I'm His shit, yeah. which he know he don't work. I say it's trapper. There's no, that is your motivation. Yeah, 100%, 100%. I, I didn't get to see rappers or famous people in my hood. Not time. You know what I mean? That's, that's it. So that, that was like a destiny. I wouldn't say destiny, but yeah, I was all about it. I'm not going to take them back. Like, oh, they, I, got, I got involved. And nah, nigga, yeah. I, I, I like that. I yeah, facts. It. It's a part of your story. 100%. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. I was, oh, yeah. You know it's what I'm saying? It's a part saying? of your story. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. How, where would people be grinding back then? Like, you see how right now, everyone goes OT, we go out west. That we actually had block, you actually had your phone, your block actually moved. We're from, we're from Galloway, so. Yeah, the Road. East, I'm not going to like Eastern niggas. Yeah, I look at, not, I look at Eastern niggas like money getters, you back, feel okay, me? Okay, back in, in, in the, growing up, Kingston Road is like, turns into a highway. And on where our strip is like, it's like Scarborough, but it's the downtown of Scarborough almost, so to speak. So there's a bunch of hotels and motels on the side of the strip all the way down. So what happened was all the prostitutes back in the 90s, I used to notice when I, came, I used to go to the store for the older guys, I used to see what the game, I see what's going on. So the prostitutes, get the truckers and everybody that stuff, and they get the, yeah, the truckers, yeah. Yeah, and, and the communities itself are on dope. And the people from out of, like, um, around the surrounding areas come to there. So it started to boom in the, like, 90s. When I was, when I was growing up, all I seen, it was big time, too. Like, not like now, it was big time, like, traffic before phones. People just walked through. Back then, people just walk through the ends. Crackers just walk through the ends looking for shit. You know what I mean? So it was like booming, booming, booming. You know what I mean? So like, it was a pop. It was as a kid growing up in that. I'm not gonna. I I, I don't blame nobody or nothing. Cause what I saw made me who I was. Like, I that was normal. I'm not saying it was right. Oh yeah, it was normal. Yeah, I'll give him that. And get this money. Yeah, hell yeah. You know, OG tell you for sure. You never, you never do this drug. This is not. We don't do this ever. But if they want it, they come. So I'm dealing with people that are older than me. This is a grown ass man. I'm not poisoning no community. This guy's been poisoning himself for 20 years. He's an old ass fucking, you know what I'm saying? I'm dealing with him with, with giving him what he wants, you know what I mean? So like, it was just like that, like that, the area was just known for that, right? So different parts of Scarborough maybe weren't. Like, so you have Melbourne's different, they got houses. It's not like that as far yeah. as they got on something else, maybe, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Our thing was more transit, more like, yeah. you know. So you guys are grinding like in the neighborhood. In the neighborhood, the neighborhood. Yeah, in the park. Oh, yeah. Like that. We grew up in there and then we took, people took their skills different places. But like that's where they started the game and shit. You know? How, how was it? What would you like financially? Like was there money in the game back then? Yeah. Oh, yeah. There was money. The, the, everybody had what they needed to have. Cars. Things, things was. Oh, yeah. Mm. Shit was different. It was, than, like, it was different. Like, it, I don't know. Things just changed. As I got older, though, it got slower as far as the traffic. Communities changed, like in the 2000s. Communities changed as far as I don't know how to explain it, but it just changed. Where I don't know if I don't know how to, it wasn't like summer barbecues flex when you're driving around as a kid no more. It's like people just like it just slowed down. So I don't know how to describe it. I don't know if the police came with more raids, more cameras. Yeah, with the times what it was, the times just changed. And then I went to jail. And when I came home, that shit was really done. You know what I mean? Like people don't even go on blocks ever. Bro, you know bro, what I, mean? I look at it like you see how you. Like, you were grinding from young, you know? Yeah. The, I've been, as of recently, I've been thinking, like, yo, bro, the government. Like, people look at people who sell drugs, like, the niggas that come from poverty, come from metro housing neighborhoods, like, yo, yeah. bro, they're bad, they're drug dealers. No. Bro, the government sells drugs, bro. Yeah. You feel me? Oh, all no. these pharmaceutical drugs, like, oh, yeah. perks, lean, all this shit oh, yeah. that they have out here, bro, it's getting people high, bro. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. 
Like, exactly. You're just providing me. So you're not like you're breaking new, new customers. I didn't go around and turn nobody into a crackhead. A crackhead came to you, and you said, so you don't, you don't turn. You're not. They try, they try to make it seem like you're pumping and ruining the community. The community <laughs> ruined, dog. Yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. Shit fucked up already. You know? life. Yeah, brother. So at the tender age of nineteen, like yes. bro, I call your story the story as a nightmare and redemption, brother. Yes. Yeah, so the I'll Jakes you, came for you at 19 years old. Yes, so you want to explain like what I'll happened, exactly like how did they come for you? How what happened now? So October, October is an important month in my whole story, which is weird. So October 1st, 2004, the police came and I don't know there was a raid going on in the neighborhood. In the neighborhood, so I go, I I don't know what's going on, you know what I'm saying? So I go to the hood, see? The time I don't live in the hood, I go to the hood, and I'm riding around. Um, um, in the hood, when I get to that, I ride the bicycle. That's how it is in the hood. You got Danzig, you got North. Oh, you're living on a bicycle. Yeah, a I thought big. you were talking about a motor, but no, 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 a bicycle. Our, our a little big like that. So, like, this is how you move around certain, like, Danzig. So, I'm around. Boom, I remember I made a whop out of chop. You know, I made a little whop. Boom, Danzig. Went to McDonald's. I'm looking like it's hot. I'm just bored. This beast. Up and down kicks and road. I'm like this beast on horses. I'm like, oh, this piece of horses. Shit's hot out here, dog. <laughs> Sick. You know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, go to yeah. South, go to South Side. Uh, another like, lava night. Yeah, you know, you know, it's like, whatever. You know what I mean? Go to South Side right quick. South Side Gala. I'm chilling. I park the bike up, you know, chill with a couple of the homies. I walk over to the North Side and shit. See what's going on. You know what I mean? I go to my, my friend's house on the North Side and it's like, it's an apartment building, but at the end of the hallway, uh, my nigga Burns lives on one side and Smokey lives on the next side. We get to their side, there's no doors. Their doors are completely gone. It's not like it's broken. Oh, dude, like the the door's yeah. completely gone. They can mm -hmm. look through your apartment. After and just... look through your apartment. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, yo, what the fuck's going on? You know what I mean? I look. I go into their house. They're trash. Like, yo, please raid their house. I'm like, yo, yeah, please raid the house. That's crazy. I want my nigga, um, shout out Stacey. I want my nigga Stacey Rap. And um, I'm like, that's crazy. That's what I mean. I'm like, that's mad. You know what I'm saying? So I'm there. Because they all oh, smoke stuff. I'm going to get some weed and shit. Like, yo, let me get some weed. Like, yo, they got no weed. Peace raid the house. I'm like, oh, that's crazy. So I'm saying, so I'm chilling. I'm like, that's mad. So they're playing the news is on, but they got it on Omni. Omni. You're, you're watching the news at home? No, at, at their place. So I'm in their place. The place is fucked up, right? And then the news is coming on now. So I'm watching the news at their place. And um, they got it on, but it's on Omni, which is Asian. So I don't even know what's going on. But boom, they show pictures and they show them picture. Wanted for him. I'm like, yo, what the fuck? I wanted for Ray, Ray, Ray. I'm like, I wanted for this you see, your, you see yourself now. Myself wanted for organized crime. So I'm like, yo, what the fuck? You know organized what I mean? crime. They put up OC? It, yeah, but it's, yeah, but they put up organized crime, but it, they're speaking in Asian. It's on Omni. So I'm like, yo, put that on the different news. Well, different, it's on every fucking station. This shit's going crazy. CP24 City crazy. News. My phone's blowing up now. My mom's calling. Dad's calling. Dad don't even call that much. Dad's calling. Mom's calling. Everybody in your fucking life is blowing your phone up right now. So, you know, so I'm having like a, I'm trying to think. And they're saying participation in a criminal organization, which is like Canadian version of the RICO, it's organized crime. But at the time, I didn't even know what that was. You know what I'm saying? Like, nobody, this is the first time they did it. Like, so I'm like, what the fuck is that? You know what I'm saying? Like, so I'm like, I don't know what's going on. You know what what the fuck is that? Yeah, you know what I'm saying? So, boom. They rap. Um, I, call a, <laughs> I call a cab. I'm like, can we cut back home quick? Can we do something? You know what I'm saying? As they get down, boom, the cops arrest me, take me down and shit. By the way, you, were you at your door when they got you? No, I got, just... jumped in the cab and I was driving on Lawrence and the cab just stopped. So the cab was in on it. Wow. The cab just, yeah, the cab just stopped in front of, the, in front of wow. not the pullover lane. You know when you get pulled over? Um, stopped in the middle of the street. Just, yeah, driving and then the car comes behind me and the car comes in front of me and he stopped in front of, on Lawrence, between Lawrence and Kingston and Lawrence and Galloway, there's a graveyard. They stop there, not in the pullover lane. They just stop and out the fucking... Cemetery and on the next side, ETF converged on the car, not in the pullover lane. So they stopped both sides of traffic. They stopped the whole thing. Like they had that plan to take down. They had your phone tapped, eh? Exactly. I yeah. didn't know that. I didn't know. Go, I was just going to go home right quick, figure out what the fuck, you know what I'm saying? Get some shit together, you know what I'm saying? I don't, I don't know what the case is about. They yeah, said what's running through your mind? Oh, like, yeah. I'm like, yo. And at the time, my lawyer, Richard Pozen, I'm like, all right, good lawyer and shit. And like, I don't know what they're talking about. Participation criminal organization, is that even serious? Like, Richard Poisoner, who we had on the show. Yeah, it's my Shout guy, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, like, I didn't even know, like, I'm trying to figure out, you know what I'm saying? We go, so I'm saying before, so I gave, um, let me not get into that, but yeah, sorry. I, I was with my homie. So I gave my homie whatever illegals I had. I was like, you know, well, fuck, I don't know, this is wild. I gave him whatever. And the good thing I did, because as soon as I got in the cab, I was like, you know what I'm saying? Boom, scoop me up. So that was like a takedown point. They had it all lined up and shit. Anyways, so I get in now, and I'm in the, and the niggas, niggas, one, two of my niggas coming in too. I'm like, what the fuck's going on here? 
They charged us with that October 1st, 2004. They charged you with OC at that with time? OC, it's just OC. So I'm like, Yo, what the fuck? What the fuck is OC? You know what I mean? So boom. After about six months in March, they come through and they charge him with murder, attempted murder, attempted murder, attempted murder. While you're in custody? Yeah, while I'm in custody. Wow. They came back with a whole, because now I'm lining up for like a high court bail. So I'm in the East Attention and I'm lining up uh, for bail now. We're all trying to, so then the police are like, you're not getting bail. You're thinking you're, you're getting, getting, getting bail. bail. Hold on, Your Honor, we're going to revert this over to Larry. We got some new, new information coming in. Where I'm, like, I'm like, what do you mean new information? What are you talking about? Yeah. Like, I don't know what's going on. I'm like, yo, what the, what's the organized crime? I, I can beat this. You know what I'm saying? This is soft. Yo, they came, dog. They came with everything. They hit me like a whole bunch. Calls down. Calls all downstairs, the whole gang. Mm -hmm. They hit us with like, I had with a murder, attempted murder, one case. Attempted murder, attempted murder, another case. What? Attempted murder? Two times, attempted, times two. three attempts in total? Yeah, two different cases. So murder, attempted murder for one day situation. Attempted murder times two for a different situation. Uh, robbery and some other shit. A different situation with a different set of coeys. Oh, yeah, so yeah, this is how it's OC. So look, me and couple, me and two next guys on a murder and attempt. Me and a next guy on the two attempts. Me and three next guys on the robbery. Me and us were all jointly charged, organized time together, but on different fucking things. My brother and the next man have a body on a different body together on a different thing. Yeah. You get me? Yeah. From different locations. It's like, it's extremely complicated to get down, but yeah, it's a lot of like it's all the guys that were charged together. So it's the man that were charged together. You roll with him, you two have a body over here. But we're all jointly charged organized crime. But then you three have a charge with over here with this and this. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. You, know, you know what I'm saying? So it's like And they're calling the, the Galloway boys yeah, on the, on the yeah, news. Yeah. yeah. So so I had the murder, the two attempts, or the, uh, the money mart robbery, which is big, which is I played a big case while I'm here right now. The money mart robbery, which happened after I explained that to you, it's important. So money mart robbery and then some drug shit, some gun shit. Like all, all the other shit I didn't even remember. Once they said the M and the Tesla shit, mm -hmm. all this other shit was like all the other shit was like they're like, oh the gun did this. I'm like, okay, yeah, like, like I'm already here. All I hear is that. I'm like, yo, and I don't know what they're talking about. Cause the murder they said, do you that die? I don't know this guy. I didn't do it. So I'm not, I'm trying to think about is what murder? Yo, who, when? I'm trying to think what day, well, where was I that day? But I can't really remember. My brain is fogged up. You know what I'm saying? I'm fucked up. I go back to the cell. And Are you going to remember a random day? Right? I go back to my cell. My cell is my, my co with me. I'm like, yo. I'm like, yo, what did they charge you with? You know what I'm saying? He's like, yo, they charged you with um, the money mark case that we got. Kobe, I got bite on a money mark case before I was on bail, before I got bite with the organized crime. So they looped it in. We didn't know why we got bite on the money mark robbery. We didn't know our phone was tapped. So what they did, we went for a food, they bite us, but they gave us all bail, not letting us know that our phone was tapped so we could do more shit. That's what happened. So we're on the same, so we're finding out now. So he's like, yo, they limped in um, the money mark case with the organized crime. That's all they charged me with. I'm like, yo, that's all they charged you with? They're like, yeah. I'm like, bro, they charged you with fucking murder? Attempt? What the fuck? You know what I'm saying? I'm like, nigga, what? You know it has spinning. I'm at spinning now. I'm like, bro, what? You know what I'm saying? That's all they charged you with? Fuck, what the fuck's going on? I had spin. I can't. And you were 19 at the time, bro. I can't grasp what's going on. Like, yo, what's going on here, bro? Like, who's saying what? What's going on here? How? See? So later now, what happens is, so they charged us with that in March. The guy that made the statement and got his charge now, he's still on the ends. In the turf. A guy who I, made a statement, like he's cooperating with the police? He made a statement, cooperated with the police, right? But we don't get the statement until July. He's still on the ends being placed in his protection in June. Nobody knows what's going on but him and the boy them. So he's so still around, he's out and this, about. I actually talked to this fucking guy while I'm charged with He's like, Joe, you got charged all that too? And I'm like, yeah, bro. This is, like, this is crazy. You know what I'm saying? I'm the judge, I'm like, this is crazy. This is the fucking pussy that has mm. me charged. That's what I was going to ask anybody to cooperate. Yeah, this guy made he made something up that wasn't true. That's why I'm here today. But he but he had a role in making something up that wasn't true. Did that benefit him? Did he, is that why he did it? it was, yeah, did he, he had some benefits to it, so mm. he did what he. But the, the the what we didn't know is that we didn't know how the system works. So they do that, so you can make a statement, they have it all up, but they have you still going, and they put you in risk protection yet because we don't know yet. So when they drop disclosure and it comes out that you're a rat, you're already in risk protection about two months. But the whole time you've been a rat, you've been on the ends. You get me? Yeah, you've been doing the man. I'm on the phone talking. Getting to info. You. I'm on the phone, like, yo. Yo, like, yeah, like, yo, what? Yeah? Yo, they gave me the charge too. It's crazy. You know what I'm saying? And you already ratted. Oh, yeah. So when it comes out later, you see in his clothes, like, yo, this guy ratted in fucking October. Yeah, I dropped it. I dropped. You know what I'm saying? Because what he said, too, wasn't even like he ratted. The stuff he said 
was proven to be untrue. I got exonerated, so it's yeah. proven to be not true. Yeah, we're gonna get Space there. Okay, so we're in now. I end up later getting convicted. Hold up. Okay, from yeah. the time you got charged to the time you got convicted, how long was it? That's the fucking thing. So now, Canada never did this before. At that time in 2004, Canada has never done participation for a criminal organization, murder for the benefit of a criminal organization ever. That was the first time they The did. first time they've yeah. done this. So it's like the benefit. Of it. So they never had a trial for this. So there's no case law. So what happened was it took five years for us to get convicted. You normally you don't sit in the bucket that long. So 2009. So yeah, 2009. So I sat in the bucket. We did three years in the East, and then two years in the Don Jail. The old Toronto Don. The niggas know the old Toronto Don Jail. Yeah, Don Jail. Don Jail's closed right now, right? Yeah, Don Jail, boy. If you know, you know. Backside. 2C backside. I want the man to know that too. Backside. You know what I'm saying? If you know, you know. See what I'm saying? So how are you, like, in between that time, how are you How are you feeling? Like, what's your mind state? I'm feeling like, yo, the five I'm years, to win. I'm sitting there waiting I'm for Trump. I'm supposed to win because I didn't do this shit. Yeah, you're innocent. So I'm you're innocent. thinking, I, I have to bust this. I have to bust this type of thing, right? The case is pretty, I can tell you what the dude is saying that I confessed to him, but I didn't. And what he's saying don't make sense. And they're taking his, the police are taking his yeah, word because so he's like, trying to right, see cool, you. Yeah, so I'm like, all right, cool, get to a jury, go bust this. Mm -hmm. Ain't no problem. You did but jury, what, you did jury trial yeah, or judge. But, 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 but the thing was, though, when we got arrested in 2004, they blew it up in such a way that every time we went to court, we had an ETF escort. I don't know if you've seen the what movie is, SWAT is, or something like that. I watched SWAT, yeah. So ETF escort is your P5. Only the chief of police could designate that. So at that time, it was a guy named Fantino. He designated us P5. P5 means ETF and tactical escort only. So if you have to go to the hospital, court, whatever, you go out and it's ETF taking you down, bringing you to court. Your wagon is just you and the homies, me and my co-ees. That's it. You know I'm saying ETF down. You know what I'm saying? So they dealt with us like that for five years. They built a court in Scarborough court, gang court for us. They built a court in the high court for us to follow all the other gangs. They built, so the money's being spent. The uh -huh. government is spending. When I say money's being spent, they, want they built a 43 division. They want, they want to sink you guys. Yeah, they built 43 division off of us. All of these things, like when, I, when I sat back and seen all the promotions of what happened after it, it was crazy, crazy, crazy. So ETF is bringing us around for five years. That's a terrible look. I'm going to court every day, this ETF escort is fucking terrible. You know what I'm saying? It's high profile. It's high profile, yeah. right? So then they're putting too much on it. So uh, the high court, they built the high court, the new court, all that shit. So the court's like a, a whole new courtroom. The jury can see that. So in our courtroom now, after you get searched in the courtroom, you go up to our courtroom, there's another stand where they're searching the lawyers, the crowns, the lawyers getting searched. It never happens. Yeah. So they're searching everybody else again before you get in our um, courtroom. So I tell me it's not rigged, you know what I'm saying? I felt like the case, we had a strong case where we didn't, I didn't do it, Koei's didn't even do it, she's going nice. And, but the way it looks though, is just like crazy. Like as far as the security wise, right? Hundred percent. I tell the jury to show up at nine o'clock. We're showing up nine o'clock. ETF escort. The jury's coming to court. They see looking siren. at you guys. Bro, they hit sirens up and shit. They pull up like it's a way. I'm in there in the back. They pull up a way, fam. If you see that, you're gonna be like, yo, who the fuck is that? Yeah, exactly. The niggas can't touch you. Because they're on some like, shit, on, fam. Like you know what I'm saying? Like, they're on some right. shit. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. So they hit us like that, and then uh, yeah, they hit us like that. So I got convicted. Because it was, it was biased. Okay, the day of conviction. Yeah. On what basis did they convict you on? They don't really got to tell you. Like a jury trial is just like, they just, just come back. They just took the evidence yeah, and said, the jury just like comes guilty. back and says, yo, you're guilty. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to AC a little bit. You know what I'm saying? So the jury just comes back and say, you're guilty. What happened was like, they didn't really, you don't got to tell you why. You know what I mean? And I thought, like I testified. I went on the stand, testified an alibi. Because I wasn't you there. You gave your alibi. Gave my alibi. Which is something that was hard to do because niggas I work from, we ain't trying to go on no stand, nigga. 100%. You know what I'm saying? I was like, 100%. yo, because I understand they got wiretaps and shit that, like, I've said on wiretaps. Yeah. So there's shit that, this is how court works. So your shit on wiretaps that you said. You might have said something about this homeboy on wiretaps that you said. Yeah, exactly. Because, so it's but not, it's your homie. You but might it's, just yeah, be talking. It's your homie, yeah. but it's out there already. Yeah. So evidence now is out there. Some stuff that, so you might have said, yo, whatever, but it's out there. You know what I'm saying? So the crown will do now is to test your. Credibility, they'll put, I'm on the stand now, I got an answer to all my wires. Like I had 13,000 intercepted communications. You know what I mean? So, like, there's sometimes they're putting on, so what did you mean by this? You said this and this. You said, um, homeboy can't be a leader like that. What did you mean by that? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. so they're getting you, remember, I'm on a child for my life on the alibi. I can't lie. I can't, get, I'm saying, I remember they got it already on playing to the big speakers. So I'd be like, yeah, well, this is what I meant. You know what I mean? Translate it. Translate, you know what I'm saying? Like, there's no real 
So on the stand, doing with them, I did pretty good on the stand because they can twist me up or catch me as a liar or nothing like that. We got their witnesses all twined and up. And one thing that you could say that could have been a mistake or you forgot that. You can't do that. Your whole, your, your whole alibi, your whole mm. life will be over. So I was... Don't you find that? Don't you find that fucked up? Fucked up. That the crown could say whatever they want. Oh, it could yeah. be an accident or anything, but and they're they're still credible. But if yeah. you say something, well, it's was, like I was, it's I, was I was definitely it. nervous mm. because like nigga, you say something. If you lie and it could prove you're lying, that means you're lying about your alibi. So you know you need to know what you're doing, nigga. This is the big leagues. So I'm saying going in front of people and that, and that, and that shit's serious. See what I'm saying. So I went. I thought I did good. Well, I'm black. I got convicted anyway. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I was choked. Is this separate trials for everything or one no, trial? No, it was one trial. No, what they did was... So what they did... Let me break it down a bit more and take it back. So everybody that was charged with us organized crime, they figured out my brother beat the murder, ended up pleading to attempt murder, which is aggravated assault, pled down, did dead time, got home. A couple guys pled... Did, everybody pled out and got home in the first about three and a half years. Mm -hmm. So they figured out a, a way of figuring it out so they wanted us three as the trial this was going to be we didn't offer us no deal no police came to me and said yo oh we ran out of your homeboy they were like nah this is it this we're is our project yeah this is our project we're taking you guys to trial this is gonna we're doing this you know what i mean there's no we don't want a deal there's no other at that time there's no other conviction for a murder for the benefit of a criminal organization in canada ever no bikers nobody no 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 mob nobody you know what mm -hmm. i mean as far as a trial for it so there's that, so it took us 18 months of pre-trial motions to figure out what we're going to do. And this is the part that's key. Because the pre-trial motion is now they want to throw in shit. Like all kinds of shit. For a regular murder case, you talk about the day in question. And like, that's it. But since it's organized crime, they want to talk about me on the wire selling drugs to this guy, calling this guy for shots, and lifestyle shit, which is terrible. When they, at the time, the nigga, like, the time niggas, niggas' wires are terrible. Like, you know what I'm saying? Niggas, I, I hear my wires on the fucking shit, I'm cringing. Yo, I said, yo, yeah, yeah, man, shot to y'all, fuck it, 45. <laughs> like, it's, it's fucked up. It's fucked up, nigga. You know what I'm saying? Like, because we niggas ain't talking about no killers, no, but niggas talk the shit. Yeah, yo, yeah. yo, they have phones. Yo, yo, we're talking the shit. The shit's like, as far as like, not really violence, but as far as certain. You guys are young too, man. Yeah, so we're talking about shots. I need bullets. I need this and this. Yo, my mm. balling. Got two gunshots. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. a lot of, like, mm -hmm. So that character shit is no good, fam. But it has nothing to do with the murder, it has nothing to do with the case, but they're using that to fuck me. So remember to I told the image of you with the, the money mark thing. So the murder that we're charged for happened in March, right? In March of 04. This is when they say the murder happened, mm -hmm. right? My and you got arrested in October. October. My coes got arrested in April on a different thing, on a different two attempted murders, different case. So my coes got arrested for two different cases, right? So they're already in, in April. I'm on the road. Right, so I get bite in June on a money mart robbery. You got knocked in. Knocked. Them. My phone's wired because they got the judicial authorization to wire their phones from April because they're respecting enough for that that murder shit. They got the authorization. They're watching our phones. I get twined up. We, we nothing. I, I knew something was funny because we went to the shit spot. We had an inside job type thing, and if we, as soon as we went, the, the fucking cops everywhere. I mean, like a thousand cops flying. When the you're going to do the food, bro. The Durham region got helicopters and shit wow. back then. Before you even do the food, Bro brother, we, we got to the food. Mm -hmm. <laughs> got to the food. Yeah, just to eat for the viewers. <laughs> Before you did the robbery, bro. We got to the food scene, and we're, we're scoping out. Like, yo, we're waiting for the girl in the call. Is this the right one? She'll tell her to bring the money to the back type thing. Like, we got we, one dude is doing that. It's not me. I'm just one of the muscle. So <laughs> we're in the back. We lean up on a Durango. It was like a, it was a black Durango. We're in the back alley. We're leaning up on Durango. We're chilling. Like, you're figuring out, yo, you might, you go. Why well, you go try the door? So, boom, my nigga Stretch, shout out suspect. Nigga Stretch goes and tries the door. As he tries the door, all the beasts him come. So, the, the Durango we're leaning up on was like down the um, alleyway. So, I'm standing up by our rental. So, boom, the Durango pops up and flies down the thing. The same one. Pops wow. up a uh, flash grenade on me, but I couldn't even move. The shit was so loud, my nigga. I got so I got so bummy. No cap. <laughs> he jumped out. He, he threw the shit. I, I thought I got hit. I, yeah. I was like, oh shit. I, was like, I couldn't even move. It was so much. Like they hit us like Durham. The motherfucker police back there. The make helicopters. The niggas hit us like I couldn't even run. I was like, holy shit. He jumped out on me. The same fucking Durango was tinted up. They're in there the whole time. Wow. Like, the whole time. The, like, these guys are chilling in the Durango. In the Durango or well, well, on the well, back the of the police Durango, are inside there. The food, like, yo, figuring them out. Yo, we should go for the thing, bro. We're, we're, they're in the Durango, my nigga. Wow. I couldn't believe it, bro. I couldn't wow. believe it. I couldn't believe it at all. I couldn't. They came and hit us up. So I got bite for y'all. Got bite for that shit. So what happened now? The syndicate and that is that. So that happened in June after the murder. 
So in the pre-trial motion, the Crown wanted to bring that in. So you have a thing called prejudicial and probative. So what is prejudicial to the guys and what is probative, probative value of what's the case? This is helpful to show the jury what's going on. Or it's prejudice. We're saying it's prejudice to bring that in because it post-dates the murder. Yeah. You understand me? Yeah. So the murder happened before this. So yeah. the Crown saying, look, this is an example of how this guy calls this guy and organizes a flex, a move, an organized crime while they organize a move. We're saying, yeah, maybe so, but we learn, we could have learned that after the murder. This happened in June, not before the murder, after the murder. So who's to say we didn't learn that style exactly. after? You can't use that in this one. Exactly. You get me? If you yeah. understand the law, you understand me? You can't do that. You right? Will, can you break that down? Like, what do you mean by that? After before. Okay, so, so this is what happened. Let me break it down. So the murder takes place March 3rd, Okay. The robbery that I'm charged with and accused of takes place in like June. Okay? But so now we have wiretaps from that robbery and stuff showing how we link up. Keys links me. Yo, what going? Y'all have a food. Yeah? Yeah. Inside thing. I mean, what up? What up? 150. Yeah? All I got to show up. No sticks? No sticks. Yeah, the manager works there. No stick. I'm there. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. Come on, nigga. Come yeah, on, exactly. Man, nigga. Yeah. I, I, I feel yeah. dope, my nigga. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But like, one, no sticks. Oh, I'm there. You know what I'm saying? I'm not. I, I'm actually not missing this flex. Yeah. Yeah, I'm explaining to understand too. We're not like the mob and shit. We don't give kickbacks and shit. If you wasn't on the food, y'all know how it goes. If you wasn't on the flex, yeah. you ain't getting no money. You ain't tied the shit. I might buy you some, but you ain't tied the shit. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes oh, I'm on the flex. Get down there, you know. Yeah. Come on, this is like stealing. I knock a girl. I'll take that. No homo. I'm saying no disrespect, but that's off. You know what I mean? So boom, we go in it, and so they bring it in. So as I was saying, that crime took place in June. The murder took place in March. So they're trying to say, they use the wiretaps and the way we grouped up in June, they're saying to use that to say this is provative because it shows how they organize and link up for flexes. We're saying, no, it's not. That happened after the murder. So how do you know we use that, that type of link up strategy before the murder? We could have just learned that after the murder. You understand what I'm trying to say? You can't mm -hmm. use that to say that we... We built up, we, this is how we move. This happened three months after the murder. If this was before the murder, then it would have some probative value, but it doesn't. The, the judge ruled it did and let it in. So now in trial now, they're bringing up that. So in my trial now, I have all these wiretaps of us. This, this Money Mart robbery is happening in a murder trial, if you understand what I'm trying to say. No. Mm -hmm. So instead of a murder trial, you're hearing about Money Mart robbery. So did they get to use it? Yes, they used it. So they, they, got, it, they got to use it in the trial. And talked all about it. So now I'm on trial for murder. My two co-eys were in jail when this happened. So now we're listening to about 47 wiretaps of two next people. This guy that landed up in his girl talking about the food. Not even me. Playing a bad role. Basically the character of me. Now the jury sees me eating food. Ray, Ray. It was a bad role. That's why I ended up winning my appeal and shit. That case. That's why I won and my co didn't. Because I had something different. And I had an alibi and I had something different. They used that against me, which they shouldn't have. Because that happened after the murder. You get me? They broke the rules right there. Okay, we're going to get into yeah. that right now. Mm. So, they got to use that, and then they convicted you. Yeah, they got to. So, what happened was, the next thing, too, we, that case, like I said, was first. There's no case law for that in Canada. So, there's no, as my lawyer said, they're throwing all the mud against the wall and seeing what would stick. And the judge, the judge is just like, yeah. Right, yeah He's yeah, soaking yeah. it all yeah, up. Yeah, so he would go to court. Just the most, I mean, the court was, like, was making me sick. I don't know if y'all been in before, but going to court that will make you tired and shit. 100%. So we go ETFS court Monday to Thursday, every day, every, for 18 months straight, okay? Every day we have court. Every day. 18 months? Every of day. trial. We have court. It's just for pre-trial motions. But it's like trial because they argue the motions. In front. So we argue for what happened. We'll go Monday to Thursday for like four weeks. And then the judge will be like, all right, I heard both sides' argument. Give me like three weeks, two weeks, and I'll come back with a decision. So I'm going to be off for two weeks, and you will come back with a decision. Yeah, and my every fucking time, I'm going to tell you this right now, every fucking time, every every three motion, yeah, I reviewed the case, and now I'm going to let the Crown's motion, I'm going to let the Crown's motion in. You, you let in every fucking thing. The man let in every fucking thing. There's a female Crown and male Crown. Um, the Crown is a girl or a guy? The Crown, the Crown's um, a team. We had a whole team of Crown. Just baby. The male, female. The and the team. judge is just the judge babying is, them. The judge is babying them. Mm. The judge is letting them do everything. Mm -hmm. You're putting in this wiretap, that wiretap. Mm. Beer fuckery. Bro, like, that's what's wrong with the yeah, system, man. I'm telling like, you, man. They're using organized crime to bring in the stuff that they shouldn't. So they're bringing in stuff like you and you talking about buying two guns and two bullets. That had nothing to do with this murder, but just showing how we are. Bro, I didn't know. If, you, if you're not from our culture... And you hear our taps on loudspeaker, 
it sounds crazy. One man, so, and they play the whole call. So it could be 10 seconds of me, of what they want, the, the program to show what they want, of you buying the shots or you doing this. Mm -hmm. But since you, the call was a minute, they play the whole call. Of you talking about bounty killer dance, they're like, bounty killer, is a, they don't understand the breakdown, all kind of shit. You talking about the girl you slap, yo, she gave you head, all kind of shit, friend, nigga. It's crazy. And a lot of speakers, your, your dukes and them there. Yeah, that's what I was about to say. The families, families in the courtroom like, listen to all crazy. of that. When they play this shit, this is wiretap. 295 happened on Worcester. Everybody just starts sweating. Big one thing, you start like, oh, shit. What did I say? I don't even know what I said. Holy shit, holy shit, holy shit, holy shit. You don't even know what I uh, said. Yeah, because like, you can't remember that. You can't remember that, dog. You're like, holy fuck, holy fuck. So, yeah, they, the judge doing everything which he wasn't supposed to. So, that's how I later end up winning my appeal because he, he brought in that money march that they mm -hmm. weren't supposed to do. So, we go to court every day. He makes his decisions, which always fucked us. Every fucking time he fucked us. Every time he gave the crown. Like, everything we, we couldn't get food. We were like, yo, we're here. Every day, we're like, there's some other people that are getting like like road food or food from the jury. So the jury, they get like a meal from them. They go, why can't we get one of the meals like that? They're telling us, we don't do that here. They're telling us, we don't. I'm like, guy, I'm downstairs in the P5 ISO bullpen with the man I'm getting food beside me. Mm -hmm. Dude gave me a piece of his burger. Yeah. What the fuck are you talking about? Yeah, you guys can't deal with me. You got me starving. I was yeah. I would lost all that, my nigga. Masters. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, yo, it's, I'm like, bro, we lost that. So, you know what I'm saying? And the judge is not going by facts, bastards. Sam, but he's trying to tell me something mm. that they, they, they're literally telling me no. We'll give you three of those shit sandwiches a day. Y'all niggas know them sandwiches. We'll get three of them sandwiches a day. I'm like, bro, the man's getting rolled for the smell. He's beside me. I give him a split. He gives me a piece of the sandwich. You reach out the bar. That is some P fives and shit. So I'm like, yo, something like yo, nothing was going. I knew I felt that vibe. When I seen the money, the ETF escort, I seen the courtroom, I seen the money, I seen the way things are going, I felt like it was rigged from the beginning, bro. Yeah, like, there's a lot going on here, you know what I mean? So, yo, that conviction comes down. How do, well, like, how do you feel at that moment, man? Crushed. When you honestly, say you're convicted honestly, you know of what? murder, brother. You know and what? Now, how, what were you convicted of? I'll tell you what. So, I got convicted of murder, attempted murder, and participating in doing it to the benefit of a criminal organization. So, in turn, when I got convicted of that, they dropped the two attempted murderers. They dropped everything else. Hmm. So, what happened was first degree murder, 25 to life. They just sentenced you right away or you came back for sentencing? Oh, we came back for sentencing, but it's automatic. First degree murder, 25 to life. Attempted murder, since the victim got in the head at a, a few, a mm. couple in the head, um, they gave us 25 to life for that too. So had two life sentences, and then they gave us 14 years for organized crime. Two so life sentences in 14 years. Yeah. It was concurrent though, but... What people don't understand is when you go for parole and you're serving 25 to life, they take it all in accountability. So your first, after 25 years, your accountability, you go for parole, you're not getting that. I'll tell you right now, you're not getting that. No matter what you do, you, you, no matter what you do, you're not if getting that. If you have a double that. or you have a one? If you have a double. I have, I have life, 25 to life for murder, 25 to life for attempt, and 40 for next crime. Although concurrent, it still factors in at parole. Concurrent is? Concurrent together. So I can go for parole on 25 years for both of them. But they're not going to give it to you. It's, we, it's, we, no, like everybody knows, like no, you know what I'm saying? Well, well, Thirty, it's thirty-five. Just one, murder one murder, possibly, depending on your conduct in the bing, and, and for niggas, nah, you know what I'm saying? Because like, they want nothing to happen in the bing. Shit happens, like where you have to do shit. You have to stay on the yard with the gang. You get me? Or you're a bitch, or you want to die in there. You know what I'm saying? Like so, they 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 they, they, they play this game. Like like you have to. They want you to follow these certain rules, but you literally cannot because you live with the you live with the gorillas, so you can't go against the grain. And they're telling you, well. Well, in two, uh, three years ago, you had this uh, misconduct with the, well, we can't let you go now. You know what I mean? Yeah. But you know that, nigga, you know I had no choice. You know exactly, like, exactly. You're stupid, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I live with the gorilla. So that's why you see guys don't get in parole and shit. You're like, yo, my, he's fucking up. Or, nah, he's, just, he's hard in there, my nigga. 100%. Like, he, 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 yo, like, it's a war zone, bro. You got to make it as a, it's you know, a jungle, bro. How you want to live? You live with the gorillas. Keep that in mind. You live with the gorillas. Your girl's not there. Your mom's not there. Your niggas on the road's not there. You live with the gorillas. So Tell you, these young boys out here watching. So if you with the if you want to be a bitch, niggas will know you. You live with the gorillas, so you know what I'm saying. That night, how'd you like? What was your mind saying? The cell, bro. Crushed, I was crushed. How's that? And I, your mom, I, I bro. We don't smoke. My mom was crushed. My whole family was like, I got newspaper articles and shit. There was like crush on the floor. It was, it was crushed. The whole everything was crushed. Oh, they said you do 64, 16, 19 years old. They sent you. I was like five years in, but I was twenty four like, or something. Yeah. I'm sentenced like, to life, not life. even not even twenty five years. Mind you, I didn't do it. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, yo, this is crazy. I'm doing myself, nah, this appeals and lawyers telling me about this appeal shit. I don't even know. That's five years, oh nine. I didn't know that this shit I was gonna be in there 
and then they're almost fucking 13 years. So. Yeah, for that pill. Yeah, so like, I thought they, they told me a pill would be like 18 months, three years. I'm like, all right, 18 months, three years? All right. So you get to the pen now, and you're telling your PO, first of all, I don't, I don't know if the niggas know, you get to the pen reception, all that shit in the bucket where you had the PC, it's all mixed. I don't know if niggas know it's integrated. So if you get to the pen now, all them guys you was like laughing at and saying PC, they with you. They Why were, is that though? How this, is how, PC this, is how, this is how the federal system There's is. no PC in the pen? There's no PC in the pen. Wow. You know what I'm saying? So like only Jamie the Max was there. I went to Jamie the Max, but reception was like a medium, like a pen. So yeah. it's all like all the weirdos. So I seen dudes like was in PC. I know from PC on the range. So your rats are in. Oh yeah, oh yeah, they're living rough. Oh yeah, pedophiles. All that shit. It's a community. So they want to know if you can't make it here, you can't make it on road, right? This guy's will rat and yeah, he's a rat. You know what I'm saying? Hundred percent. So boom. So after that, we went to a uh, Max, Jamie the Max, with me and my coies. That was an experience um, where I learned a lot. Uh, a couple of my seen a man die there. The guard, I didn't think I'd see. He that. got hocked up. No. And I pick a hot time. No, the guard shoot them, kill them. Wow, that's why? The, that's something I never thought I would see. I never really in seen front of your that. face. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. I'll why did they do that, that though? I'll what was he doing? That. You see, so in orientation, they tell you when you're going to unit. If you're running down someone with the hawk, they will tell you they'll shoot you. Like it's part of it, yeah. Because their job is to preserve life, everybody's life, right? So an incident went down. I don't got time for this long, but it still went down, and yeah, they hit Buddy, man. They shoot him, they killed him. They shot him a couple of times. So three people got shot that day. One guy died, though. He left her in a body bag. Yeah, I did, that's something I didn't anticipate. That's something that kind of fixed up my, my mindset a little bit, because, like, we don't have guns. On road, you step in, you do your thing, but I didn't expect that to be in here and die by gunshot, my nigga. Tear gas and jail in the max. Like, I didn't know they do it like that. Like, you shot one dude in the hip, bum, bum. They shot this dude, and they might have shot my dumped him. So I'm saying, like, he died instantly. You could tell, like, you know, like you're gonna turn your TV off, like, right on the free throw line. I play ball, right, right on the basketball court, right there, boom. And I never knew that happened in kind of Canadian jails, oh, yeah. bro. They don't tell you so, about this. They yeah, don't, I don't never they, hear it. They don't tell you about none of this shit down there. People get shot at, like, I seen at least about seven people shot, one dead. And tear gas and shit. Ah, niggas oh, yeah. are getting shot and shot, and shot oh, by the oh, fucking oh, yeah. seals. Oh, yeah. the Max was fucking a zoo. That place there is like... The Max is like... Yeah, I don't know. They changed it now. They put the Collins Bay Max. It's different now. But J Unit Max, Mill Haven, how it used to be when I was there, 29, 10, 11. I got out of 2012. I did six, two years, six months to get to Fenbrook. That was... Yeah, I did... I don't... I didn't, ex I didn't expect that. Not guard shooting you when you were not taped up. Mm -hmm. That put you on point. You don't want to. That, wanna, that, that put you on point. That put you, put you on point. I ain't come to jail for that, my nigga. I didn't come. I didn't, I didn't do this. I didn't, I'm trying to make it home. I'm trying to die, my nigga. Holy shit! Like I'm not running down. I can't die like that. No, for he sure. died instantly. You could tell. Hit him, and it wasn't like he was like, ah. Oh. It hit him that one. This is on the yard. It's on the yard. The yard in the gym. So in the gym they got like gun towers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I so seen that shit. Tear gas. I thought that only happened in America, up. bro. That's crazy. America. This guy. <laughs> Jane and Max is a zoo, my nigga. Toronto, Ontario is not no joke. Like Quebec, no joke. The prison system in Canada, no joke. The native dudes, they don't do no joke. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I heard about them. It's not they're not what people think. They just don't tell you. Yeah, for sure. They keep it under wraps. They keep it under wraps, but nah nigga. They ain't coming to jail die like that from gunshot, my nigga. Nah, nigga. Nah, nigga. So how how's your mindset as the years are going, bro? Like what changes do you feel you made? Um just mentally, more and more as you were going. No what? As like Doing the time as more psycho psychologically as far as dealing with people and all walks of life. So in the pen later, as I got out of jail, I went to um Fenbrook. Fenbrook is like a lower medium where you deal with a lot of fraud guys. You need to behave to be here, right? So to be able to talk and learn a lot from different people from different aspects of life. Because before I, when I went in, I only knew the streets and us, right? So now... In there, I got to learn. I finished my schooling, went to college. I got to learn and deal with people that weren't from our life, walks of life. I got to deal with some fraud guys that showed me some shit, some guys that, some actual legitimate people. A lot of people are in there. Some of the people are like, they're not like us, not from the street. So this guy is like, wow, he might have killed his wife or whatever. But 30 years before that, he was a law abiding citizen, worked his job. His lawyer, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, they're, they're, they're normal, normal guys. He might have just killed his wife. He's sure he's crazy or whatever. But, like, he's not all. You could learn a lot from yeah, all yeah. people. So, what I started from... doing was, yeah, I was learning from that. I wouldn't really hang around too much of the guys because I grew from that. Like, I know that. I did five years in the book. There's no story you can tell me about the street that I don't know about or that I ain't went through. You know what I mean? That's not going to show me nothing. The man them now that I'm learning from were the guys smarter than I was. 
those old, some of those guys that like stole a bunch of money. You know what I'm, saying? I'm from the streets. We're risking our lives for peanuts. This guy stole a bunch of money and he's here and he's going home next week. I'm looking at never going home. You know what I'm saying? For nothing. For nothing. You know what I'm saying? So like how like these kids gotta know this kid wanted to steal some money. Then the Canada slapped you on the wrist. You know what I mean? Like, you know what I'm saying? You we were running around with sticks and selling drugs and doing the most. You know what I'm saying? So I was learning a bit more, not just crime, but learning how to deal with and communicate with people, with the guards, who's on, how to talk to them, how to deal with them as an adult, how to get stuff, how to deal with people psychologically. So even a, a counselor, you can't get that kind of skill from school. If you're going to be a therapist or something, you can't learn that from people teaching you. You have to be in the world talking to people. I've talked to crazy. I've talked to the weirdo. I've all different to, types of people. Yeah, walks of life. I've, I've, mm. I've seen it all. All walks of life. Our walks of life. That, I've talked to the rat on the range. He's a rat because he's not like us. You have to understand. He grew up civilian. He's a civilian. You guys keep thinking he's tough. He's yeah. a civilian. Sure you know? These kids don't understand yeah, that these days. He's got bites with a thing. He's going to tell. Of course he's going to tell. Mm -hmm. He's a civilian. Why are you bringing a civilian in the car? Exactly. And then when he rats in, you're acting like he was he's a shocked. rat. <laughs> nigga. You know what I'm saying? Like, nigga, you stop. Stop it. Leave people. You know what I'm saying? Like, so learning part of like going in, which was a, a nightmare, which ended up working out. Like I said, I was able to survive and get certain schooling done and certain stuff that I wouldn't have done if I was on the road. I was on the road and a one track mindset wasn't really open to shit back then. To be honest with you, I was gonna fuck up. You know what I mean? So I learned how to deal with and help people, which I feel like those skills there you can't learn nowhere else. Like I wouldn't have got that type of skill from anywhere else. I met men from every ends in Toronto. They force you to sit down and like sit down yeah. and deal with the men in every end and deal with everybody. With a mindset of, well, okay, we can't just be violent and be crazy and warring all the time. We can't do that. You know what I mean? You guys, I know you guys will get along. And shit, but right now, we're in fucking January to Max. Bro. It's we hard enough. All the other options. You can't, we can't afford this. You yeah. know what I'm saying? And it's hard, it's hard enough it's being hard in enough here. right now. Mm -hmm. You worry about your appeal and getting home. You worry about this guy. When you get on road, I'm about to get on road to deal with him. You know what I'm saying? But right now in here, we ain't doing that. You know what I'm saying? We ain't doing it like that. You know Did you keep in contact with your homies on roads? Like, were people giving you updates on life and shit? Yeah, that's the, that's the funny part. That's the craziest part. So I'm in now. And before I went in, I was like, oh, this rap shit. All right, yeah, I like it. I'm a fan. I knew niggas could rap. But I didn't see the, there was no internet. You know, there's no four. There was no, it wasn't like that. So I'm like, yeah, but while I'm in there, I'm seeing the shit pop up. My niggas is telling me I'm talking to Prim. like, yo, this, guy, this nigga Drake, he's sucky. I'm like, yeah, yeah. I heard it ring. I'm like, oh, this thing is tough. Sick, sick. But it's slowly happening. Oh, nine. Yeah, they come the up videos, and shit. I'm watching the videos. I'm like, yo, it's the niggas. Them. Oh, shit, it's really happening. And the guys on the pen, they're sending me the tapes. Because in the pen now, you got to have just this man. So you don't, we don't got MP3s and yeah, like that. You got to buy the disc man. I'm doing my pull-ups and yard and shit with the disc man. I don't know if young boys know about that. The CD. I need the CD hard copy. You know what I'm saying? That's how we run it. Classic. 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 That's how we do in the yard. That were cassette tapes. Real good shit. You don't give you nothing else. So we're doing that. I'm listening. I'm like, yo, this guy's sick. I'm taking in uh, pre. I'm taking a lot, of the, a lot of the city. My homies, them. I'm like, oh, we're growing. I'm like, God, oh, this shit's really happening. Yeah, Prem was going in too. Going he's in. in this thing. And then they told me about this guy they met, Drake. I'm like, he's doing in too, because I never met him yet, right? I'm like, yeah, I listen to him. I'm like, wow, this guy's good too. Wow. You know, like, mm -hmm. this is real. And then it was happening one time. It was like I was in there. Baca was on stage with Drake in uh, in uh, Vegas somewhere, some show. And I was in, I was watching. I was like, what the fuck? You know what I'm saying? I was like, yo. The hell I'm telling them, like, yo, that's the homies. I'm like, God damn, I'm going there. You know what I mean? You just treat a nigga like me. I'm like, oh, I'm like, wow. You know what I mean? Like, I'm like, I got to get the fuck out of here. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm like, this is crazy. You know what I'm saying? Like, no, no way. God, got to get me out of here. Was you know your appeal I mean? already in the works at yeah, this time? Yeah, it was in the works, but by that time, it's been like 10 years now. You know what I mean? Like 10, 11 years. Niggas is like, yeah, I see, but you know, you've been like, yo, did years. you think you were going to get out? Like, yeah, I, I never lost faith in that. Case. That's what I'm saying. A lot of people would be crushed. And man. the case was like, Week, so I was like, I was on it, but it took super long, dog. Like thirteen years is not is not it's regular, you know what I'm saying? So five years they got convicted, and then what? Seven almost years after that, you fucking get the appeals forever, dog. You know what I mean? So I'm like, people lost faith. I feel like, like it was hard calling every Christmas, and it's hard. Yeah, missing on Christmases, year, yo, missing yo, on birthdays, yo, everything. Mom, is, dog. Yeah, trust people, me. People got lives. summers. My nigga, my nigga, Prem had a kid. I mean, he was growing. People are people are growing. Like, you know what I'm saying? People are, people are having lives. And so, like, these young boys, your niggas aren't always going to be there. Not because they have things, not because, like, they don't care. They have things to do. 
Like you now a father. People are now things. You know what I'm saying, my nigga, you're still in there. Like you're you after one two years, you get that people think okay, they come home after a couple of years, they think they're tough, but they did a little bit. It's soft because you really experience that thing. After you're seven, you're eight, you're nine, and your friends have they still love you, but they've grown. Guy, I have kids that like have things to do. Things are changing now. People are growing. After that, then that really sets in. People don't get that. You know what I mean? They think it's a joke until you do like after eight, nine, ten years, thirteen years. You exactly. come home now, and your home has got kids, big grown kids. You know what I'm saying? Like you're, you're coming. Like, shit is really changed. People don't understand time until you really do time. You know what I mean? You know what I'm saying? Like I said, Facebook and that shit wasn't. I come home. That shit is normal. Like all this shit. You know yeah, all, all that shit is normal. You know what I mean? All the social media, all that shit is, is just like prevalent and normal. You know what I mean? Kids are being born in 04. I went to jail that year. They're growing and every, it's crazy. You know what I mean? So like... So how'd that appeal go? The appeal, so yeah, the appeal I worry is um, I had confidence in once it being heard that um, it would, I would be free, right? And then... Um, what year is it? 2017, you get retried? Yeah, 2017, I won the appeal. So 2017, won the appeal... Um, what happened now? 2017 when the appeal off of the of the grounds that the money mark case, so like I mentioned, it's prejudicial. It shouldn't have been. They shouldn't have been in. Mm. That's what they hit me. So they denied my two Kobe's. They said because fuck them. They were they involved weren't part in that, of that. exactly, yeah. mm-hmm. and they gave me that and saying that the money mark thing will give this guy a new trial. As I went back to the east now for a new trial, I'm like shit. Uh, that was another experience because like I left the provincial system for so long. So coming back now, I was in there, and it was different. I could tell it was different. The times have changed. The younger generation now has come in. They have different rules. Similar, but they're different. I could see the difference. I could feel, I feel almost out of place. Like, I feel like I, don't, I can't do, the five years that in the bucket, I can't do five years now with these, with these guys and with the, it's the way it was. I can no, imagine. No, no respect, but, like, the way it was, it was just, like, there's no way I could do bucket time in this. Like, I would either plead, go back to the pen, because I know what it is down there. It's really... I can't do this shit no more. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So uh, I was supposed to go for a bail hearing. So I was getting everything lined up for bail hearing. And what these guys did now, one morning they called me for court. I'm like, all right, go to court. My lawyer's not even there. My lawyer has like, you know, one of the reps there telling them, yo, put it over to this day, whatever. I go up, the crown's like, oh, yeah, this, 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 real real smooth, real slick. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, we want to reach, we have a job, we're withdraw the case. Yeah, withdraw, wow. Uh, withdraw, 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 okay, withdraw. And then, that's Nobody's not, there, no family's there, no, no nothing? No family's there, my lawyer's not there, no, this is not supposed to happen. This is a, I didn't go for a bail hearing yet. This is, this is my first appearance, my first appearance. My lawyer, um, James Lockyer, was pissed, you know what I mean? Because this is like a this. I didn't know, but I'll show you later, it's a this. So... They just went, yeah, we're going to mark this case withdrawal. The crown's not going to proceed anywhere with this case. The crown's withdrawn. I'm talking to the court fucking, the, um, the bailiff guy behind cuffs. I'm like, yo, so what? I'm like, what? He's like, do you have anything downstairs? I'm like, yeah, my jacket, yeah. Tell yeah. told me I'm going home. I can't understand what he's saying, my nigga. I can't understand what he's saying, my nigga, because, like, nobody's here. My lawyer's not here. I don't even know where home is. My mom didn't move out. I don't even know where home is. I don't even work with him, I'm like, what the fuck? You know what I'm saying? Like, what the fuck? You didn't drop a tear, bro. I would have shed a tear right there. I couldn't even think. I couldn't even think. I couldn't even confused. You know what I'm saying? Like, so I got my, my the lawyer gave me the phone when I met me on the next side and I called my dukes to like, I don't know where, where I'm going to figure out what's going on. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Come school me. Yeah, I give her a round of applause. I jump in the cab. That. You know what I'm saying? It's crazy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I jump in the mm-hmm. cab and I'm mm-hmm. going home now. Which I don't know where. That, mm-hmm. mind, you, mind you, never seen it. Oh, I got home. Yeah, some of the family's yeah, gonna pay. Yeah. That's the least. That's the least. Remember, I didn't even know where I'm going. So it's driving me, out and everything's changed. So I walk out downtown, and everything. This buildings where they weren't. This buildings is where everything changed. I'm going to my mom's house. There's places where they weren't. Everything was crazy. Like everything changed. You know what I'm saying? I see. I was able to, with the guards them to fuck with it in there a little bit. Like, okay. like see, I was aware of it and shit. Yeah. But like, yo, that shit was crazy. I got home and the homies came check me, some money, some like, you know, fix me up a little bit. You know, I'm going yeah. shopping. Yeah. Get those yeah. little store up a little bit. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, see what's open my eyes a little bit. Oh man, that day was crazy though, man. Is- but you heard the joke though. Hmm. So I got I got arrested October first, two thousand four. I get released, exonerated, new life, October fifth, two thousand twenty seventeen. And then the gang that we fucked that OVO, so that, that whole that whole gang shit is crazy. Yeah. October that OVO, that. It's crazy how that now works. Now you right? OVO, it's crazy how that works. Right? You, October first to October fifth. So I died mm. October first, and I got mm. reborn thirteen. From years a nightmare later. to redemption, redemption on that October. It's weird, right? You feel everything happens for a reason. 
it, it must. It That's must, what I'm saying. It must. I'm saying, I'm saying, I'm saying, I think so. You know what? You're right. Because like, while I was rolling before I went in, I don't really know when I was going to come to the realization that that type of lifestyle wasn't going to be beneficial and wasn't going to be sustainable. You understand? So I don't know when that was going to when that was in a ha- a gunshot, death, like one was gonna smarten you up. You know what I'm saying? And that's reality. That's reality. You know what I mean? I wish I'm not gonna say prison was the was a good thing, but I, it turned out to to work out. Cause I wasn't really for a lot of stuff before that. You know, I was really on some fuck shit. You know what I mean? So it worked out. You know what I'm saying? When I go through your IG page right now, like I feel like bro, it happened. Everything happens for a reason. And now seeing the way you're living now, everything you're accomplishing, you you've done you've done more than people do in a lifetime, bro. You feel me? Yeah. Well, you've done more. Like right now you're a uh, and R, you said, right? So I fuck yeah, I work with uh with Preem with uh, reps up and I have um, a couple producers that I've signed and helped manage and try and get them placements and get them I've been a fan of music the whole time, even before. So I've always been a fan of music and uh how I could help the artists. That's something that Toronto as a brand needs to find out they could help your artists. If your friends and artists, or your, how can you help the brand? Being selfless as far as helping them with production, get them beats, is it t-shirts, management, whatever the case may be, we try or why try and we try and help and facilitate that. If you know what I'm saying? That's that's something I feel like is necessary in the city. A lot of the teams, a lot of the music teams that don't have the full structure of the need. Yeah, hundred percent. Need guidance, but we need them to be recording artists. Facts. We need to take that step, get that money, because people got a good, they got a good following. I was like, rolling loud. Toronto's got a good following. All the artists, East West, got a good following. Good. I think if fix it and home it and not get in so much trouble, if more to stop being afraid to book these guys, they got something going on. What's the first step though. The first step is uh, successful shows. And not getting it, getting the, the monkey off your back for because everybody's against us. The police is against the every every side. Everybody's against you and your career. We're against so, each other. Yeah, police are against, against each, each other. other. So you got to book shows and do them successfully and not fuck it up with the promoters and with the club owners. Because for instance, if you're gonna if if you own a club and this guy wants X Y Z, right? I'm not gonna risk my club, my club business, and it might get fucked up and have to fucking pay back tickets to people or you fuck it up or there's a shooting or lose my nick. Anything. That's too crazy for people. For your fucker. That's too crazy. You know what I mean? Like, who's gonna do that, right? Mm-hmm. You gotta show these people that you're you're good, you're bondable. Book me. You know what I'm saying? I'll do a good show and I'll leave after. It won't be no smoke. You know what I mean? Even you can get police there. I don't understand why you can't just hire some police to stand no, by the, the door. Police, stuff. The, the police this, you see. Mm-hmm. It's called pay duty. So pay duty will work for certain people and work for everybody. So I'm not going to work for some gangsters, you understand? Yeah. So you think certain steps can call for pay officers? They're like, no, they're haters. See what I'm saying? So that's the problem. See, I don't see the police. I don't understand why they did it because you don't see these guys, like you'd rather them rapping and trying to make a career for themselves and becoming entrepreneurs than stuck selling drugs and living but, in the but streets. Who, who though? But who though? But who though? Yeah, the police, but they should rather care. see you wanting to do something for your life, you know? Yeah, but they, 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 they make it challenging. I've seen, I've seen crews go out in certain places and... Uh, and have shows and police from that area send info to those police that yo, don't shut fuck it with down. These guys. Mm-hmm. Yeah, shut it down. And then it's up to it's them. Sometimes they do, so they don't. But I still mind your fucking business. Let your whole. I might even in your town. I'm all the way over here trying to make a break. You're telling them not to fuck with me. That's some real hater shit. You know what I'm saying? It's not even your jurisdiction, my nigga. That's crazy. That like, some let the pussy, kids eat. That's some, that's some pussy, pussy shit. shit. You know what I mean? So yeah, when it, well, one thing I would suggest to when you do your business, as far as with the promoters, the club owners, and the labels, or whatever, do it as a business. So you can't show up with 17 men's and 18 masks and 17. You know what I'm saying? You gotta show up, you, your manager, straight talk, and show them that you're worth it. You know what I mean? Show them as a, you're a professional. You can street music could be as sick as you want it to be. That's what sells. It could be all of that. Sure, the homies, all of that. But as far as the business, when it's time to do your show, your live show, it's got to be neat. You can run out of breath. You can't be. You, you, it's but would be you neat. rather their homies be in the crowd? Because, that's, because that's, people that, need that, their bridges, you know? That's what, that's what some crews have done. So you have some guys that, you, if you're a management or assistant or whatever, cool. You have your core, three or four guys, and your security, five, six. If all the homies want to come, cool. We'll get them tickets and they can all party in the front there, too. We can't have everybody partying on the stage. We can't have that that image. We could all be together, but just not together. You get me? You're right about I, that. I didn't pay for all the homies up there. I paid to see you up there in the picture. You know what I'm saying? Like, um, all your homies link up after and shit. Going be crowd, business oriented, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, that's what they're missing. They got to be a bit more tighter with the business and making like the the promoters and the, everybody else, Live Nation, whoever it might be, believe in like, yo, all right, we can fuck with these guys. 
tour bus, you who's that your manager? Scared. Okay, cool. Not you and the, the whole hood. The whole hood can't come. Yeah, I'm sorry, hundred percent. You're right. You're come. right. You know what I mean? And matter of fact, but something's like more, like more likely to happen with a bunch of, of niggas around you. You know, you can't control it. How you can? We know how it is. You know, I'm from that. We're all from that. So like, I get it too. Which is, it's hard for him to tell him that because we're from the hood. How you gonna tell your homie not to far? You know what I mean? It's hard. We're gonna see this guy's changed up. Of course they're gonna say that. You know what I'm saying? So best you could do is like get some tickets or you gotta know how to do it. It's touch and go. But if they're really your homies, really check for you. Yeah, they let you breathe for that. A little bit while you're, do, while you're doing that work. Come to the hood, I check you in the studio, you know. So I'll understand. Don't breeze for that. Because if he gets big now, big, big, big to like, let's say the boy level, then he can bring you all in. Open you back, yeah, exactly. Bring you all in when I'm set. Right mm. now, okay, I'm not set. Exactly. Yeah, I'm not working right now. You still not, you know what I mean? Who are you listening to in Toronto right now? Who are you, like, who are you fucking with as artists? Fuck, you know what? There's a lot. Because we got talent, man. Dude, there's a lot of talent. Yeah. A lot of t- I, fuck with, I fuck with the whole, the whole, my side, the whole. Um, way out the whole YTN Paco, YTN, Kaz, Paco. Mm. I fuck with Paco Kaz all of them um, G-Boy I fuck with all those guys I, I want to see them do good I fuck with them outside of the block um, I fuck with the way out too because of the north side I fuck with them too I don't want to leave nobody out but um, the city is good in general like uh, the CLE they're doing good yeah, yeah. Uh, Press they're doing going doing in good. the whole west side 100% doing good. Doofy them doing good like, 100%. like I, I listen to like I'm objective to where you're from yeah, I don't care exactly I'm like who's that I heard the song the cook you good, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, like, yeah. A lot of yeah. guys like you're top ten. You know, like, like it's not about like, your neighbors and stuff. Good music, right? good like, music. I, I listen to good music. Yeah. Really, I'm really sways. Like, I just like whatever I like. You know what I'm saying? Like I bump it. I'm, I'm I grew out of the the hood. Yo, what set you from? Right, right. Nah, nigga, play the music. Who's that? Y'all niggas, alright. You know what I'm saying? Because I realized from doing so much time with everybody, Western, we're all very similar, my nigga. Don't think you're that far. Yeah, I don't think it's that different, nigga. They just trying to do what you. It's all the same, my nigga. If you diss them, they go fire. And yes. when you, when you leave like the you. city, you guys are all the same. Yeah. You're from Toronto, Especially you guys are. When, you leave the city. Uh-huh. Yeah, when I see people outside the city from the city, I fuck with them. Regardless, you know what I'm saying. I don't care if you what block you from. You outside the city, we catch you in like an LA or something. I fuck with you. You know what I mean? Can't just, just don't. We the city's bigger to me than anything else. Like this, you know what I mean? We we won. You know. Yeah, the blockchain ain't nothing. You know what I'm saying? The city shit, oh yeah, we ripping. Oh yeah. See, like you see, you're more experienced, you're older, you're wiser. Like you were saying, like you you did time, you, you fucked with everyone. These guys don't know. Like fucking with different people or building relationships with different people in different neighborhoods. Oh, like you're gonna get you could get some money out of that, something you good out of that, you know? Successful just in your own hood. Yeah, you're restricting Even when yourself. I was, like in the street, you need to cross market and do business with different parts of the city for that stuff. I'm not promoting that, but that's how it is. You cannot be an op and even in prison will show you for instance example there's no weed in the jail y'all want weed them niggas got the weed it's your op block you don't fuck with them yo see yo, yo. i gotta go through and deal with them why don't we just deal with fix this you know what i mean it's busy you can't have those kind of relationships that's just a small example but just like that on road you know what i'm saying you can't have that where you don't fuck with them because of this and that so now you can't get what you want because of your ego, because of your you know why you don't fuck with yeah, you don't even know why it's not even that serious. But you know what I'm saying? Like, Nine times out of ten, it's a broke nigga telling you I don't rock yeah, with these people, don't talk to each other. It's a guy that has nothing going on right. for himself. Nine times out of and ten, bro. Also, this 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 music business is a business too. So like, if you guys are hot and this guy wants to make song with this guy from that and whatever, who no one said they're best of friends. But if they make a good song, they make good music. That's how music business goes. They don't have to be best friends. His problems ain't your problems. You know what I mean? Y'all gotta stop this whole like your beef, my beef, bro. You made a song that's good. It's it. Keep rocking. There's so much good. rappers I would love to see in Toronto on a track together right? from like different neighborhoods. There's, there's a lot bro. of them, bro. You, if the streets are beefing, cool. I never said stop it, but music is music. Yeah, make the money. You want the money or not? Like I said, I was telling you before off camera, but like I'll say now, who do you know in the streets? Off of the street, or we know trapping or whatever has made millions like that. You cannot buy a house on Park Lane or down or on Bridal Path with your trap money. It's not gonna happen. You're not gonna no matter how much bricks you could bring in by the time. Don't matter. You cannot buy a fifteen ten million dollar house. Hundred percent. Music will. The talent will. Your talent. Music will, entrepreneurship. Will. All well, of that. That will lie. Seen the fans reacting to the Canadian artists and were screaming at the top of their lungs, enjoying themselves. The man, them all did good. All the Canadian guys had a wave, a wave, something you should really think about because that trap shit cannot buy you that house on the battle path. I know, believe me. <laughs> you, you can't. Niggas buy and watch for your whole life and, and never seen a brick in their life. Never, they don't work with guns, no bricks, nothing, and they have everything. So the, the way of the streets can only get you so far, bro. Bro, you know these guys mean? don't know. Like, I felt like 
They should let even DJs put you guys on tracks together. Like if Drake told all these guys right now, the two different people that are beefing with each other come on track, they're coming. You feel me? They're not gonna listen to. They're not gonna be ignorant and listen to niggas in their head. Yeah, exactly. They'll do it. You feel me? So they should get involved. You know? Yeah. Like see, make yourself. What I say to the, the artists coming up: make yourself open to opportunities, bro. You can't let the beef or what you think stop the money. What do you want to do? Go to the bing. You want to trap forever? I can guarantee you this: you can make a mill, two mill, three mill. You can't buy a big ass house. Or two or three of them. Use your talent. The crowd screaming your fucking name. They love you guys. They love these kids. Mm-hmm. I've seen it. Yeah. I was like, well, I was watching. You're screaming shit. I'm like, wow. Use that. That will get you the name, bro. This other shit you need to stop. You need to figure it out. I wish I seen. I seen some crews had a such a strong following where I wish they would stop. I wish they'd figure it out because the way the crowd, if you look at them, the way they're passionate about your lyrics. You need to figure it out. Did you think back then, back in the day, you'd, Toronto would get to this point musically? I didn't. Did you ever envision I'm it? I'm not gonna front. No, right? I, I, I liked it. I liked the music and I knew there was talent because I heard guys with talent, but I didn't think it would be like this. I didn't see like Drake, The Weeknd, the way, the, way, the, way, the way the thing turned up. I didn't see it like coming like that. And when I was watching it, it was like, it's unreal because Canada was always got like, Growing up my age, you got like the shit in the stick as far as the slow ball. Right? Yeah. Yeah, straight, kind of yeah, yeah. Sports, high school ball, whatever. You niggas don't even can't love me. Exactly. Where the hell is that? Got, igloos. They yeah. never really loved us. They never really loved us at all, right? So now they're finally coming around with the boys, exceptions that now everybody listens to us. Now when we talk to people in different countries about whatever, any business, they at least are listening. Before they want to give you the time of day, now they're listening. You know what I mean? They listen to you, they take you in. And imagine in the next 10 years, right? 10 years after it's that. We have a lot going on here. Mm. We, have, we have Bieber, we have Tori, we have Weekend, we have a lot. Someone is saying the biggest artists on yeah, top of the game are Canadian artists. Artist so, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. That's good. That's, that should, like I said, if I was a young rapper and I had a little buzz and I could rap and that talent, I would study on that because I know that that's the difference. You're looking for that fifth money you're looking for. Some sort of gratification, this will do it. The streets, that's pocket change, bro. Mm. Y'all that's listen, take it from a guy who's been you, there, I'm bro. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I, I know guys that did good in the streets. And that's that money to you, it's not that much. You, you think $2 million cash is a lot of money. It sounds like a lot of money. Yeah, now it's like it's crazy. Oh, but, yeah, it's crazy. but you're lucky if you get to walk home yeah, with that $2 million, yeah, you feel exactly. me? And not have to send a lawyer what, fees though? and all that. Guess what, though? The house that you want right away costs 10 12 15 yeah. That $2 million is nothing. Yeah. $2 million just started, you, you actually... You actually don't have enough money to do anything. It's actually not enough. People think you're, you're actually not going in with nothing. 100%. Are facts. You're actually not going with nothing. I'm around some of the, the biggest artists of, off of their entertainment, off of what they've done, off of their talent. They could spend your whole life in one shot, and they never seen a brick. No bad month in there had a gun. They yeah, none yeah of that. exactly. They're talented, and they worked on their talent. So let's think about that. You know what I'm saying? Because you're going to listen to that earlier you before you have to listen to it later. Get, I'm you, you're you not going to get. You can't spend ten million dollars off of the trap money. You can't. You may make it at some point in life, going to jail, niggas trying to kill you all your life, but you can't spend that. My you. you can't live. Life. You're blessed cool. if you get to walk you, home with that, bro. I'm telling you, if you're talent, you're rapping, and you have people that like your music, like your brand, use that because that's what's real. It's just YouTube, all these other streaming, all these other platforms are getting you. Real live money. That's exactly, exactly. Because like you're not getting. I know. I seen it. You're not gonna win. Not winning no big wins. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, look at the house, look at that song. Guess what? People with regular jobs and shit that worked their whole life at university got that shit, nigga, and didn't go to jail. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. So I know people that went to school did it the right way from my same neighborhood, did everything the right way, and have acquired all the stuff where some trappers. I've got and went to jail for how many times and just have a basic house and a nice little car and we're right. 100%. So what? You know what I'm saying? Regular people got that shit, dog. You know what I mean? Yeah, young is take the, taking these gems, man. It's not listen to your elders, if, bro. If I could rap, but if niggas I don't just talent, talk for no reason. I would do it. If I could, I, I'm not a rapper and that, but if I had a talent, man, yeah, man. Hell yeah. People like my shit. Like if I went to the store and people were bumping my shit. I'm running with this. Oh yeah, I'm running with this, my nigga. I could talk greasy and get paid. Yeah. Nigga, I used to be <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, I am re- you're, just telling, you're, just, you're just telling your story. Yeah, like what? Like, nigga, mm-hmm. fuck yeah. What? I love that. Tell us about the book you're about to drop before you wrap up your snow. I can't, I'm going to get into too much of it because, like, uh, it's what it is. I'll tell you, I'm just figuring it out because part of it is, like, fiction and nonfiction. But part of the problem is, is that some of the stuff that I would like to go into and like to talk about, 
is a little sticky as far as certain things. You understand? Mm. Like certain uh, street, certain things. Yeah. That I like to tell. I, I like yeah. to keep. I like to keep it all the way real. It might not be good for everybody. It might not be good for me. It might not be good for everybody. Victims, family, and anybody. It's not a good idea. So what I'm going to do is, uh, I think I'm going to drop it as inspired by a true story or based upon a true story and not change names and fix certain things up, dramatize things or switch it up. Can we? If I tell you to, it's not going to work. You get me? I can't tell you the real. You get me? That's something I would... I th- the real is too real. Get me? And like maybe later I'll leave, I'll release a, a memoir later about certain things, but I don't want to talk about not just my life because I don't care. I'll tell you the real, but my life also in, involves other people that I don't want to bring in. I wouldn't want to tell their story and I'm not, that's not my job my job is tell my story yeah, so I don't want to tell anybody else's story you know although their story is kind of the play in my life I'll tell it a bit but not I'm going to keep it direct so that's what I didn't really that's why I haven't really given the title or I've just been talking with my agent and publisher about how to figure how to structure in a way where I'm cool with it and the people around me are cool with it like I don't want to get me like mm-hmm. I'm not talking about next man's thing. Nah, right? yeah, CD. We need more people like you, Broski, to come. Like they used to hear about you. We need more people like you all here. You know what I'm saying? Getting game out, bringing people together. No, I'm glad I made it because like I used to be the kid. I used to be that guy. I remember. I used to look at. I used to be that that guy. You yeah, know? So yeah, I get it. So when I see him, a young boy, wild and stuff, I get it. Don't be stupid, nigga. I was him. I tell an OG fuck off too if he starts me the wrong way. You know what I mean? Yeah, 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 yeah. You yeah. gotta know how to deal with these guys, bro. You gotta know how to deal with because I was. Not the best guy, you know. I learned how to grow too. So. Over time, yeah. Like, Over time, that easy, easy. You can't, and mind how you deal with it. You can't try and bat up the you. Yo, my, my. I wasn't going for that shit either. Yeah, exactly. I wasn't going for that either, dog. Like, who's this guy, bro? That wouldn't work with me. It wouldn't work. So I don't expect to work with these guys either. You know. Yeah, come to them with some wisdom, bro. Yeah, come to them with more, step more. to them a certain way. A certain way, like or, or what you're doing, my. I'm not saying don't do. It. I wish you wouldn't. Seeing Yeah, but no. Keep this in mind. Whatever you're doing, and you're getting a little bread OT. Whatever you're doing. That shit, I'm telling you as a man, is not going to last. So get your things and go. This is not a career. Whatever you're doing as, a, as, a, as, as, as illegal, try and stop. Try. It's not a career. Get where you're getting, get your bag, and cut. Invest into something else. If your brethren's a rapper, invest in his career. If your brethren has a podcast, help mm, them. Do straight. what you can do with your, with, your, with your trap money, whatever. But don't think that trapping is going to be a career. I know career trappers. I know how it so goes that end. Them. Trust me, yeah, money was going and money's up and down, up and down. But, but guess what? At the end of the day, it wasn't big money. They couldn't get the ten million dollar house. They had money, but what? 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 What money? Money to you is not money. What you thought? It's not real money. It's not real money. You yeah, you made a fifty or two hundred bands, doggy. A man's Richard Mills, three hundred your whole life. You went to jail twice. Exactly. You went to jail twice already. Exactly. You went to jail twice. You know what I'm saying? Money, like come yeah. on, come on, it's not big money. You yeah, thought 100%. it was big money, but it's not. You know what I mean? Hundred percent. They travel. Go travel. Yeah, they leave your neighborhood. Go, see life. You understand? Okay, this is money. Mm. Is life, brother. Man could travel with no luggage. Understand that. Understand that. Man could travel with no luggage. Flying here, I don't need a luggage. I have a room, there, a house there, I have a spot there. That's yeah, hard, wavy. That's wavy. Getting trapped is not getting me that. I know it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Trust me. You know what I mean? Bro, Broski, before we wrap up, like your story, you, did you hear Adnan Saeed, the story of Adnan Saeed? I know. What's it's, it's a guy that got, he's from Baltimore, right? Adnan Saeed, he's from Baltimore. Yeah. He just he just came on roads right now, like a week oh, ago, yeah, I think. Oh, yeah, I see something briefly. briefly he got wrongfully not... convicted, got yes. sentenced to life, I think. He did 25 years already, mm-hmm. and he, they guy. just freed him up right now. for. They said he killed his, his girlfriend, like after oh. and his high school sweetheart, killed their strangled or whatever, and the evidence was horrible, and they put him in jail. But he just freed up his, his story. Shout out to Adnan Saeed. His story is another Shout story out. of redemption, they him, bro. They should give him some compensation. They didn't want to give me nothing because they're no, I'm black. Gone, yeah, like, how you not getting yeah, competition? Yeah, yeah. Um, honestly, I never actually fully formally tried. My lawyer told me, like, well, what it is, like, you have to prove malicious intent. So you have to prove that the crown or the, or the judge them did something that was malicious. To, to, to prove that I can't prove that Because they're saying that Homeboy from your set That you grew up with Made a story about you We didn't make this up He did And then the, the police believed it Although it was unbelievable The police believed it The jury believed it So yo it's a, You know what I mean They're trying to say It was plausible Broski Prejudice That's how they're I telling know, you Look, I know bro, They get me, to do something fucked up They don't get penalized They don't get in trouble Nothing The moment you do something That's Let me tell you an something accident too. It worked out I came out And it worked out Sort of for me off of the grace of God, I got Dude, lucky with this shit. How much niggas but, don't work out for? That's why I spoke about homeboy in this conversation because after 25 years, he don't got no life skills. He wasn't building boxes. For He's starting out at the job entry level with the 17 year old kids making whatever much an hour. That poor guy, you know what I'm saying? But a lot of people don't understand. And for when I came home too, I was just lucky that they worked for us 
But if let's say I was exonerated 13 years, I didn't do my crime, exonerated now, and I didn't know the people I know, how would I eat, bro? Exactly. I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't have those skills. What's your education? Like, where have you been the last 13 years? Well, I wasn't working. I was really, Oh, even exonerated, brother, it took me like two years to get an apartment. People I'm putting in for my shit, they see my name, they Google me, and they don't give me the apartment. Even though I beat the case, it says infamous or former gall- or gallery boy member, they still see that shit and don't give me. Even if I beat, I didn't do it. Mm. Mm. I'm innocent, and they still <laughs> don't fuck with me. I can't get a place in my name, man. Like, people don't fuck, like, people don't fuck with me as far as like certain people from societies, you know, exonerated. So like, fuck. Bro, man. that's why we need more good people from our community getting into these positions, bro. We need people from our community becoming crowns, lawyers, Street. judges, cops, you feel me? Mm-hmm. That's the only way shit could change out here. Mm-hmm. Broski, before we wrap up, what little things do you appreciate? What do you appreciate about life right now? You feel me? You're away 13, 14 years. What do you... Uh, definitely. What do you uh, look up and just say, yo, I'm grateful for this? It's random, dude. Little things you might be happy about. I'm happy about... um about freedom, the ability to do and live and see the world, how and see different places and travel. I haven't been to uh, to Africa yet, but I'm, I'm planning on going, you know what I mean? Certain places of this, just uh, just the ability to do what I want when I want. The little things, that's something that really matters. I could do what I want when I want. Although I work, I could wake up, I'm not under the same program of the prison and the structure and listening to the guards and what I could do what I want, what I want. I have my own choices. I could choose to be around who I want to be around when I want to be around them. So like in there, like I was around the gorillas for like ever. You know what I mean? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like I didn't choose. So like that's the little things. Yeah. Being free and being able to pick and come here. I can leave. I can go home right now. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Mm-hmm. That's uh, something that I guess it's a, uh, I don't think it's really appreciated because everybody's used to that. You're used to living your own life and doing what you want. But, like, I appreciate it more. You know what I'm saying? Like, I could go home now. I could stop doing what I'm doing. I could do what, you know what I'm saying? It wasn't like that before. I had to go with the, go with the punches. Go yeah, with and the, the white punches. man's time, the guard's you know time, that the bullshit. Guard's time, whatever they said, and, and try and, like, fuck. I spent most of my adult life trying to finesse the system on how to get more things, mm-hmm. more time out of my cell. You get me? More time out of my Fuckery, you know what I mean? No, no special ladies in your life. No beautiful, all these beautiful women out here. Did the woman get more pretty? Since, you came <laughs> yeah, out? since I came out, let me <laughs> tell you. Let me tell you though. I'm gonna tell you that though. I don't know if it's the wave or what it is, but like since I came home, the girls in my trunk are crazy. I'm, I'm good. I got a girl. I live with her. I love her to death. Shout out. And yeah, me too. Man. Shout out. Hey, hi, hi. Shout I love her. But like, the, it got more crazy. And it got super easy as far as the wave. So before, like, he was just a regular guy, and now I fuck with certain homies and certain shit now, but they're all on it. You know what I'm saying? All over the world, the reception's been really good, but I don't know if it's genuine because I've been getting a lot of reception rolling with a couple of friends, people that I have around me. So I don't know what fucking, you know what I mean? But that, it did. Yeah, yeah, every, every, we got, we got, we got, we got, you, get, you can get a BBL this day and age. Yeah. You can get your hairline done. Like you get whatever you, know, you want. You know, like, you I can't you? lie to you. Yeah, so, good. Someone I else can have a baby for you. Like, yeah, I think I, like, the way it made me feel, you think I'm like, I think I'm like, I look, I think I'm super attractive. The way yeah, I, mean. I, I don't know if it's the, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know yeah, if it's like, they think I'm try, trying to get in, but they make me feel like I'm that guy still. You know I'm saying? I can't lie. You know God's, I mean? God's, God's, God's good, bro. See, God's good. I can't lie. Bro, see, we appreciate you for coming. You didn't have to come today, bro. Nah, we sure, appreciate bro. you coming sitting down with us. Sure. Giving tomorrow? game. Where I'm from in the city, yeah, it deserves. That's real it talk. You can see it in you, brother. It deserves some light. You know what I'm saying? I don't care. Just me sitting here, ain't nothing. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Facts. Appreciate yeah, it, it, brother. Some light. The city. I yeah, like you ain't had to. You ain't have to do it, brother. We appreciate yeah, it, man. Nobody fucked with us, bro. Like I said, mm-hmm. our day. Nobody mm-hmm. fucked with us. Ain't nobody like Toronto. We wasn't going up with shit. You know what I'm saying? So they didn't give a fuck about us. So now they're listening. So Facts. Yeah. God's good. It's good to it's good to have you home, brother. Yes, sir. G- getting all your blessings. God's good, my nigga. Yes, sir. On everything. No. Man, well, that's another episode of VFS. We're wrapping up. Shout out to guys who came through today to support the man. Them. Love. Shout out Exotic416 for sponsoring us today. Go check them out. You already know. That, another one. Shout out CV. You already know. Take care. Lovely. I hear him coming to the case. He's just trying to poke up, trying to light up his...